Oscar Darden engine. If we put four typical drivers in a brand new car, odds are we'd see four totally different approaches to starting the engine. Watch. This is Harry Heavyfoot, and he takes the size 12 shoe approach to starting. Stamp the accelerator to the floor and hold it there until the engine starts. Or the battery quits. Dottie Don't Touch has a different idea. She figures the car ran when she left it, so she's not going to touch anything until it starts again. And particularly not the accelerator pedal. She figures sooner or later her car will start. It's just a matter of being patient. Patience, however, isn't everyone's virtue. Nurse Nez a throttle thumper. He wants to go, and go now. So he thumps the throttle just as fast as he can. Sometimes his car starts, but more often it floods. Finally, we come to Dora Do-Right. She knows the right way to start her car, by heart. Before she cranks the engine, she depresses the accelerator fully to the floor and lifts her foot from the gas pedal. The moral to our story is a simple one. Starting a car can be easy or hard. It just depends on how you go about it. The little parody you've just seen illustrates two basic facts. Owners have reported hard starting problems with new cars. And from our observations, many, if not most, of these hard starting problems seem to be the result of incorrect starting procedures and not the fault of the carburetor. Let me cite an example. Last winter, on an extremely cold morning, a Chicago dealer was swamped with complaints of new cars that wouldn't start. And when he called in, he told us in no uncertain terms that most of his new cars in stock couldn't be started either. Within hours, Rochester and car division representatives were on the scene, and between them, they were able to start 47 out of 50 vehicles from the dealer's stock, simply by applying correct starting procedures. And bear in mind, many of these cars had been in outdoor storage for several days. Of the three that wouldn't start, one had a discharge battery, one had a cracked distributor cap, and the third had a loose starter connection. Since none of the cars checked had a carburetor problem, the question obviously becomes, why are correct starting procedures now more essential than they ever were previously? The answer to that is twofold. An engine requires an extremely rich fuel mixture for a fast start, and yet all current carburetors have been recalibrated to the leanest practical limits to comply with federal exhaust emission standards. Accordingly then, correct starting procedures must be applied for these lean limit carburetors to deliver the quantity of fuel necessary to start the engine. The correct starting procedure of depressing the accelerator fully to the floor and then releasing it does three things essential to starting. First, it causes the accelerator pump to discharge a small quantity of fuel into the manifold. It allows the choke to close and it sets the fast idle cam and the throttle valves in the best position for starting and warm up. This is a cutaway diagram of the quadrajet carburetor, and it illustrates the positions of the choke, throttle valves, and fast idle cam when the engine is cold before starting. The choke valve is wide open, and it cannot close until the accelerator is depressed to rotate the throttle lever away from the fast idle cam. Depressing the accelerator releases the choke linkage and causes a quantity of fuel to be discharged from the accelerator pump into the manifold as an initial fuel charge. Now, with the accelerator released, the choke valve has closed and thermostatic coil tension has raised the fast idle cam to its high step. 
This holds the throttle valves slightly open in their best position for starting and warm up. With the choke valve closed, air entry is cut off, so the vacuum created by cranking the engine starts fuel delivery from the idle and main metering systems. During cranking, the main metering system can deliver fuel only if the choke valve is closed. The moment the engine starts, the choke valve is partially opened by the vacuum brake diaphragm. This reduces fuel delivery from the main metering system to adjust the air fuel ratio to the proper level to keep the engine running. Now that you've seen how this carburetor works, let's watch the starting sequence on an actual engine. For photography, we'll use a clear plastic choke valve instead of the usual steel valve. Depressing the accelerator to the floor and then releasing it does several things almost simultaneously. First, it injects two streams of fuel into the manifold from the accelerator pump and allows the choke valve to fully close. This same action resets the fast idle cam to hold the throttle valves in the best position for starting and warm up. With the choke closed, the carburetor delivers its maximum volume of fuel and the choke valve opens partially the instant the engine starts through the action of the vacuum brake diaphragm. This reduces the fuel delivery from the main metering system to prevent stalling during warm up. You've just seen how today's carburetors function with correct starting procedures to provide the best opportunity for a satisfactory cold start. However, since these carburetors are calibrated to the leanest possible limits, starting can be delayed or even prevented if the proper procedure is not followed. For example, if the driver simply cranks the engine and does not depress the accelerator, the choke valve remains wide open, so the main metering system cannot deliver fuel. In cold weather, it is extremely doubtful that the engine would start. The driver who depresses the accelerator to the floor and holds it there gives the engine its accelerator pump discharge and allows the choke to close, but forces it to partially reopen. This means the main metering system cannot deliver fuel, and with the accelerator held fully to the floor, fuel delivery from all systems is minimized, as this is the unloader provision built into the carburetor to clear a flooded engine. Finally, there's the driver who constantly pumps the accelerator while cranking the engine. This alternately starts and stops fuel delivery so the engine may start, or then again, it may not. The examples you've seen clearly illustrate that incorrect starting procedures reduce the supply of fuel to the engine during cranking. If the driver does not allow the choke to close or to remain closed during cranking, it becomes purely problematical whether or not the engine will start. That's why we say, for a sure start, use the correct starting procedure. Depress the accelerator to the floor, release it fully, and then crank the engine. If the driver does that job, our carburetors will do the rest. <laughs>